It's difficult to believe that the sleek beauty I now possess had such crude beginnings in these dusty quarries where men worked to get limestone for me. I remember too another explosion in the mining of coal. Men toiled underground to give me this, for I needed the heat it gave and the coke it produced to make the iron to make the steel. Through the mist of my past I see a ship. It brought iron ore, which huge unloaders took from the hold. Then the ore, the coke and the limestone were taken to a great blast furnace where the smelting began. And hours later a rivulet of molten iron flowed from the furnace and was caught in a huge ladle. It was here that my individuality became apparent, for the molten metal was made into a variety of castings to be used in my anatomy. I remember how hot and uncomfortable things became as I took the form of an engine block, and what a relief to be cooled and separated from the mould. After a lot of checking and machining, my engine block emerged ready to be built up. To the block was added my camshaft, a fine bit of accurate work. Then my crankshaft, complete with bearings. My valves were thoroughly tested so that they'd fit into my valve guides and seats which had been so accurately machined and my pistons already made were inserted with ease born of perfect accuracy. Every one of my engine parts were manufactured to Johansson gauge standard of measurement the highest known to engineering. With such a standard and with such fine organization there's no wonder that 400 such engines as mine can be in progress of assembly at the same time. From another direction came my flywheel. It seems to me that there's a similarity between you humans and me. For instance, without correct balance, you couldn't move smoothly. Neither could I. Unlike humans, I and all my family are correctly designed and perfectly made. And so long as we're treated decently, we live very consistent lives. The exhaust manifold completed my engine, a fine, powerful job. But to use it to advantage, I needed a gearbox through which to transmit my power. From clusters of matched gears, they assembled the synchro mesh. Every wheel and shaft had been tested and matched so as to give that part of me smooth running and easy gear changing. Not content with engineering precision alone, my gearbox was taken into a room where every gear was tested for silence. This man has done nothing else for many years but listen. So finely is his hearing attuned that the slightest variation is noticeable. That, by the way, is my universal joint. No rheumatics here. By this time, I was beginning to take notice of my surroundings. I'd been born in the huge Ford factory at Dagenham, which, although I never had time to see them, has 6,000 machines. Ten miles of monorail conveyor carried parts of the various assembly lines. Everything in this vast building of 60 acres is carried overhead and, most important, everything arrives at the right places at the right time. 
one place where a monorail is not needed is the upholstery department. 24 thicknesses of cloth at once. One of these was a part of me. I was cut up about it. What nice straight lines. Of course, where leather is used, each skin is cut separately. After all, animals are not all the same size like the hundreds of thousands of Fords I hear about. Well upholstered, comfortable and strong. These seats have the same dependability as the rest of me. I'm really very proud of my seating, from the steel frames to the finished seats. It's so important in getting the most enjoyment out of your car. But what of my body? Well, its several parts of pressed steel, prior to assembly, were made in what they call a jig. The base, the front end and the rear end. the whole was welded together into as strong and solid a body as I could wish. I began to see myself in full maturity, rather prematurely really because there was still so much to be done to complete me. What a tremendous lot of work to give me the ultimate beauty in which I finish. Every place with the slightest roughness was smoothed out by emery wheels. Not only to make a better finish, but to accept the paint more effectively. I could talk to you for hours about my paintwork the 50 operations and inspections, of the cleaning, the spraying, the rubbing down, the number of coats. Paintwork such as mine couldn't be obtained on the most expensive luxury cars a few years ago. But today, synthetic enamel, which is actually baked on, gives my body such a hard finish that it's almost impervious to scratches and atmospheric conditions. As you've gathered, I'm very proud of it. I remember this very well. It was a riveter that squeezed cold rivets into my chassis frame at a pressure of 2,500 pounds per square inch. Whew. No wonder it was a strong frame. They used pneumatic riveters as well, with red-hot rivets that were literally pounded into solidity with the frame. That's my rear axle assembly. You understand, of course, that I can't show you every stage of my manufactured life, but just sufficient for you to see my really first-class makeup. There was one thing that intensely interested me, the radiator tube machine. Really, I should have told you about it before, but it's only just occurred to me. From spools of brass, this machine made 3,500 tubes an hour. And as I only wanted 132, there were enough left for 23 other radiators each hour. Those are the fins. Now look at the cunning way they insert the tubes through them, like a shadow creeping up. The secret is that everything is made to fit often to as fine a degree as a ten-thousandth part of an inch. It's such accuracy that makes my final assembly possible. For all over the factory, my parts were delivered so that as my chassis proceeded down the line, I gradually grew into the completed Ford that you know so well. I had such faith in myself. I knew what meticulous care had been taken to make me a justly proud member of this great Ford family. And I know that whoever becomes my master will be equally as proud of me, and I'll serve him well. You can see how my body was protected and what care was taken when it was lowered onto the chassis.
that's how my brakes were tested. After all, responsive brakes must accompany a responsive engine. And here I am, a Ford V8 22, ready for anything that's demanded of me. And I'm one of thousands manufactured at Dagenham. There's a Ford for every purpose. The V8 22, the V8 30, the 8, and now the Prefect. Thank you. 